The 3DFX Voodoo 3D Accelerator may have been one of the most influential graphic cards since it was released in November 1996. Suddenly games look different. Smooth gameplay at 640x480 with filtered textures drew a smile on many gamers' faces. I certainly envied my friend when he got his Voodoo graphics card from Orchid, with 4 megabytes of memory. Hey, wait a minute. Memory size of 6 megabytes. And the maximum memory size of 8 megabytes for the original Voodoo chipset. Did you know this? If you are like me, then you probably thought that the first release of the Voodoo Accelerator came with 4 megabytes of memory. That's it, 4 megabytes. No more, but also no less. But there were a few, probably very expensive exceptions. The Miro High Score 3D came with 6 megabytes of graphics memory. And then there was the Skywell Magic 3D Plus 1, an example of a Voodoo card with 8 megabytes of memory. I was made aware of higher memory models while stumbling over a post from 2013 where the user component posted a mod how to upgrade a 4MB Maxi Gamer 3D to 6 and even 8MB of memory. Unfortunately, the pictures aren't very clear and the mod requires quite some soldering skills. A second row of memory modules are placed on top of the existing chips, connecting most of the vertical pins together. The remaining pins of the memory have to be connected by wire to either one of the two large chips of the Voodoo card. One large drawback of this mod is that you will disfigure the original memory chips by soldering a second row of chips right on top of them. I guess it's a blessing that those pictures aren't very clear. But it seems like the user component is a very nice person, because he left a detailed DIY guide just a few posts below the original post. And this is why this video exists. This video also exists because of PCBWay, the sponsor of this project. You will find a link to PCBWay.com in the video description. I happen to have the same card that was used in the original mod, the Maxi Gamer 3D with 4 MB of memory. When I looked at the layout of how the memory ICs were aligned, I got an idea how to upgrade my card without messing up the original memory chips. Armed with digital calipers, I started measuring distances between pins, chips, heights, length and widths. Then I had to sit down and teach myself how to design a circuit board or let's say, a PCB which was essential for my plan to upgrade my Voodoo card with more memory, without soldering another row of chips on top of the existing ones. This board, later to be equipped with SOJ40 memory sockets, should be able to just clip on the original memory chips. Then the board is going to be connected to either the TMU or the FBI chip of the Voodoo card. But more about this later. Once I was done with the PCB design and with the Gerber files in hand, I uploaded the package to PCBWay's website. There was no difference in price between 5 and 10 pieces, so obviously I went along and ordered 10 PCBs. The only thing I wasn't so sure about was the color of the boards. But since the Maxi Gamer 3D is kind of brown to yellow in color, I went ahead and ordered yellow PCBs. I still had my new user coupon of 5 US dollars, which I also used for this purchase. You can also get a 5 US dollar coupon if you sign up as a new user with PCBWay today. Depending on where you're living, you may have to pay extra for import charges in addition to the delivery charge. The entire process from designing the PCB to ordering was very simple, to a point where I actually got a little bit worried if what I was doing was actually correct or if I'm missing something. This was the first time I designed and ordered a PCB without having any electrical engineering background. I'm actually more of a software developer. What gave me reassurance was that before your board goes into production at PCBWay, an engineer will look over the files you submitted and will contact you in case there is a problem. I guess we just have to wait now and see what happens. You may ask yourself if this mod will work with other Voodoo cards. And the answer is, it depends. You will not be able to use this PCB with any Voodoo card. Just by looking at the memory layout of different cards, you can see that almost each card has their own placement of memory chips. In addition to the Maxi Gamer 3D, I also own a Voodoo card from Orchid, the Righteous 3D. The memory chips are so close to each other, I can't even fit a single SOJ socket over them, let alone the totally different placement of the memory chips. There are also many SMD components around the memory, which prevents the socket to make proper connection with the pins of the chip. So the Maxi Gamer 3D is really the best card for this mod. Other cards that use the same layout will work too of course, but the memory chips have to be at the exact same location and there should be enough clearance around them. 
That's my doorbell. Let's check who's at the door. Isn't it nice that I can just cut out a few days of waiting for you? Look what has arrived today. Looks like the delivery company had their fun with this box. Let's hope nothing has happened to the boards inside. Manufacturing took less than 4 days and then another 3 days for shipping. That was super fast. I am happy to say that no engineer from PCBWay had to contact me for clarification or rectifications. Luckily the boards were well packaged and protected. Good job PCBWay. I am very excited. I can't believe I'm holding those boards in my hand. Until now everything was just in my head. And now it seems to get real. I just hope those measurements are correct. You can see that there are pads on both sides of the PCB. For my first prototype I want to add SOJ40 sockets on both sides. You need the sockets on the side down because they connect to the original memory chips. They are absolutely necessary. But you could just solder the memory chips on the side up directly to the board. Since I'm using memory modules that I get from eBay or AliExpress, I don't know if they work. Better to have a socket where I can easily replace chips if I have to. If my PCB works as expected, it should be compatible with both chips of the Voodoo card. The TMU and the FBI chip. Each of those require a slightly different way of the modification. But today we will focus on the TMU only. The final goal should be two of those PCBs sitting on top of the existing memory and turn this 4MB card into an 8MB card. What still worries me are the measurements. The memory sockets need to be placed at the correct distance so the mod can be pressed over the existing memory chips, making a good connection. If those are misaligned, the mod will not work and be unusable. And of course, for the mod to work we obviously need more memory chips. For some extra support I decided to glue the sockets to the PCB with some electronic grade silicon. It requires around 24 hours to dry and create a strong bond. Since I carefully measured the distance between the memory chips during the design phase, I completely rely on the pads on the PCB for this to work out. With the help of the microscope I try to place each socket exactly in the center so the pins line up with the pads and have equal spacing on either side. First I do one side of the PCB. In this case the downside, which connects to the memory chips on the Voodoo card. I don't think you can do both sides at the same time, because you will just move the sockets on the opposite side from the perfect spot. Patience is key here. Come back a day later and add the other side if you are planning to have sockets on both sides. If you are planning to solder the memory chips directly to the side facing up, then you don't need sockets there. Once the silicon dried for a day, you can start soldering. As you may know, I like to use flux for any soldering I'm doing. And this is true for soldering those sockets to the PCB as well. Those SOJ40 sockets have plastic supports every two pins. This is to make sure that the socket doesn't bend when a memory chip is inserted. Unfortunately, I realized later that I had to remove all the support structure from the sockets to make sure that the chips make good contact. With all the connectors covered in flux, it was time to solder the pins to the PCB. Each of those sockets has 40 pins. And there are 8 sockets in total on this board. So that makes 320 pins to be soldered to this PCB. It took me quite some time and practice, but after about 50 pins I got much better in soldering a few pins in one go. It is so satisfying to see the solder flow under the pin closing the gap between the pad of the board and the pin of the socket. And now it is time to add the remaining components to the PCB. We need two 47 ohm resistors and two dual pin headers. One of the two jumpers is used to select the operation mode of the board. This can be to either add memory to the TMU chip, which doubles the memory from 2 to 4 MB for texture mapping, or to double the memory of the FBI chip, which doubles the memory from 2 to 4 MB of the frame buffer. The remaining two pins are used for connecting wires that have to be attached to either the TMU or the FBI chip. But in this video we will be focusing on the TMU only, which by the way is the smaller chip on the Voodoo card. And we are all done. I am very happy that until now my PCB works perfectly. The holes are large enough to install the pin headers and the other through hole components. I am really surprised. Information on how to configure the operation mode of the board using Jumper J1 is printed on one side of the PCB. We want to use this board with the TMU chip. So we have to short J1. 
Let's put a jumper on J1, which configures the board to work with the TMU chip. The TMU mod requires one wire to be attached to pin 130 of the TMU chip. On one corner of the TMU chip should be the number 105 printed to the board. This is pin 105, so we just have to count 25 pins on the same row away from this pin. And there is pin 130. Here is a better view of the pin. You can see that it is not connected to anything at this moment. Well, we are going to change that now. Let's put some flux on pin 130 to mark it, and now we can solder a small wire to this pin. If you're interested, the diameter of the wire I'm using here is one tenth of a millimeter. And that's it. I leave all the captain tape in place for support. It will keep the tiny wire in place. I soldered the thin copper wire to a thicker wire and covered it under more captain tape to secure it. The thicker wire is from a typical Arduino kit and has a female connector on one end which will connect to our PCB. Now it's time to install the memory into the sockets. We piggyback the additional memory chips on top of the existing memory. Therefore we need to make sure that we place the memory chips into the sockets with the right orientation. A small circle on the PCB indicates where pin 1 is located. If you look at the memory chips on the Voodoo card, you will also see a small dot on one edge. The same you can see on the new memory chips. Those dots need to align. And one more time, we need to make sure that we are in TMU mode. We have to short jumper J1 by closing it with a jumper bridge. All we have to do now is to attach the PCB to the Voodoo card. Hopefully the sockets line up with the top row of the memory chips. Time to find out. It does require some pressure, but I'm positively surprised and delighted that the mod attaches to the Voodoo card perfectly. Have a look at this. The PCB is now firmly attached. Nothing is moving and it doesn't fall off when I turn the card around. Wow, I'm really relieved. Now it only has to work. Let's not forget to connect the wire from the TMU chip and install the Voodoo card in a motherboard as a 3D accelerator paired with a Matrix Millennium 2. If you enjoyed the content so far, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you think that the content I provide is valuable to you, you enjoy what I do and you can afford it, you can now support me through Patreon. Your monthly contribution will help me to continue to produce this content for YouTube. There are no membership tiers. Any support will give you access to previews, behind the scenes and you will be able to connect with me, discuss and probably influence the content I will create. You already have my gratitude for considering to support me. There is one more thing I need to tell you about this project. Whatever you have seen so far in this video are the successes. There were countless of hours of trial and error. Grinding down plastics, cutting off excess material with razor blades and more grinding. There were also several attempts to connect the wire to the TMU chip. And there was so much more. Let me know if you're interested in a separate video with all the issues I faced in this project. I just want to make you aware that there were a lot of tiny problems that I hadn't considered. But all could be resolved and we finally reached to this point. The Voodoo card is now installed in my ASUS P3BF with a 1GHz Pentium 3. Let's see if the memory expansion card works and if we can see any kind of performance difference. Without the additional memory, Everest shows the usual 4MB of video memory. But with the memory expansion card, we get 6MB. I almost can't believe that this project seems to be successful. Let's move on to do some benchmarks with 3 Mark 99 Without the additional memory, 3 Mark 99 reports 2MB of video memory and 2MB of texture memory. With the memory expansion card, we still get 2MB of video memory. But now we get 4MB of texture memory. That's amazing and I'm super happy that it seems like this Voodoo card is now a 6MB model. For real. Let's run the game benchmarks of 3D Mark 99. The race benchmark benefits greatly from the extra 2 megabytes of texture memory. You can see that the frame rate drops to single digits on the 4 megabyte model on occasion. The 6 megabyte version, however, never goes below 15 frames per second, and you can see that the render is much smoother compared to the 4 megabyte card.
The first person benchmark does not seem to be benefiting from the additional memory at all. At least I couldn't tell much of a difference and it would suggest that the utilization of the additional texture memory is highly dependent on the game. I also believe that the average frame rate is not telling the whole truth. The minimum frame rate would probably be a better indicator of any potential performance gains. Nevertheless, we score 120 points higher with a 6 MB model compared to the 4 MB version. That is a difference of 7 to 8 percent. The race benchmark rendered on average with 17 frames per second using the upgraded Voodoo card. That is 15 percent higher compared to the 14.7 frames per second on the 4 MB model. But what really impressed me is that we stayed at or above 15 frames per second with the 6 MB model. The 4 MB card dropped to single digit frame rates in the same test. And finally the first person benchmark which scored almost identical. And there you have it, part 1 of upgrading the 3DFX Voodoo card with more memory. In part 2 we will prepare the memory board for the FBI chip and increase the video memory from 2 to 4 MB. Then we can check which chip benefits the most from the extra memory. Will we be able to render scenes at a resolution of 800x600? Were most of the companies correct in shipping most Voodoo cards with only 4 MB of memory? If you don't want to miss the answers to those questions, then I suggest you subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the content. Let me know in the comments what games I should test or what benchmarks you would like to see. Thank you again PCBWay for sponsoring this project. Once I verify that the FBI mod works as well, I will upload the PCB layout to PCBWay's shared project space. You will then be able to order it directly from PCBWay without the need to open any PCB design software or the knowledge of PCB design. Also thank you if you consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.